Right, now this video is to clear up a little discussion that we've got going on on one of my videos um, between Heart of Germany and OCAUTMM. Okay, now this is a discussion on my Pioneer subwoofer video. Uh, basically, in the title of the video, I am um, I've put uh, my uh, term lab reading uh, for the two pioneers, which was 145 dB on the term lab, but that was at 33 hertz. Um, now, basically, uh, this guy, Heart of Germany, obviously a lot of experience in PA setups and concerts and um, stuff like that. Pro audio sound, okay? Um, now, this is an area of YouTube where we're discussing car audio. Um, there is a huge amount of difference between pro audio and car audio in terms of the decibels you hit, the frequencies you play, um, the the pressure of the sound in the, in the, in the area. Um, okay, I'll start off by saying um, that with pro audio, okay, the frequencies at which you are attempting to generate at a loud volume are generally in excess of 100 hertz. So 100 to 20k, okay. Anything under 100 hertz, okay, uh, you also want to hit as well, but it's the main bulk of the loudness of the, you want the people to be able to hear the music, okay, um, and you want to be able to project the music very far, okay, so it's all about projection. So with Pro Audio, you have horn um, design boxes, you have um, compression tweeters, you have um, the speakers that are actually used in Pro Audio are paper cones, they have got usually a paper um, rigid surround um, which enhances the cone area to its maximum capabilities and it also uh, prevents over excursion a little bit. Um, they, they look a lot different to car audio drivers, subwoofers, okay. Um, now, with car audio, what you, we're trying to do here in SPL competition is get a certain frequency as physically loud as possible, not necessarily too bothered about the sound quality in competitions. Um, now this space that we're doing it in is extremely small, okay? Now I saw one of the comments that was saying windows open, windows closed. Heart of Germany, you said that um, if the windows were all closed, then that car is basically like a compression chamber. It's like a, it's like a massive subwoofer box because the car is completely sealed and you've got big subwoofers subwoofer, at the back creating a hell of a lot of air movement um, and so that would then create a louder sound. Now, in reality, that might work on paper in physics, but in reality, by opening a door, okay, this is what they do in, in the proper professional competitions, um, you open your driver's side door and put the microphone for the term lab, which is the piece of software we use to measure the decibels, um, on the passenger headrest, it actually creates a louder noise. Now basically, the reason for that is because we're measuring SPL. Now SPL is sound pressure level. At a high frequency, okay, a speaker that moves at high frequency is moving very, very fast, backwards and forwards, but it's not actually moving very far, okay? So when you think about a bass note, okay, 30 hertz, a subwoofer moves so far, and then gets dragged backwards, then moves so far, gets dragged backwards. As the um, frequency increases, the subwoofer or the speaker um, can't move as far before the frequency turns around and brings it back the other way. So 30 hertz would look like that, um, and 500 hertz would look from that like that. Yeah, and then, I don't know, a thousand hertz would look like that, can't even see it moving. So, basically, the higher frequency, the less air you're moving in one big go like that, okay? This is why higher frequencies at louder volumes damage your ears more than bass frequencies. The lower you go, the more that sound is turning into a fan, okay? A fan just blows air at your face, okay? <laughs> That's what a fan does. Um, the lower frequency you go, Say for example, you were sitting in, smack bang in front of a speaker, like fucking 30 inch speaker that was doing a 2 hertz or 3 hertz test tone. The speaker would be coming out of you, going back very slowly. So basically you'd be getting a gush of air in your face and then the air drawn away from your face. Gush of air in your face, drawn away from your face. Now the pressure of that sound, the SPL, the sound pressure level, so the amount of air being moved is really, really high, okay? That, um, a 30 inch um, subway for doing a 2 hertz, 3 hertz test tone could actually be technically doing 130 decibels in SPL, okay? But that wouldn't damage your hearing. For a start, you couldn't hear it. You can't hear anything under 20 hertz. Um, it would just feel like a bunch of air in your face. 
but the sound pressure level of that would be like 130 decibels, okay? Um, what you get with high frequencies is, say, 1000 hertz or um, 2000 hertz, is because it's moving so fast, those waves going to your ears cause a hell of a lot more damage because rather than it being air movement, it's physical movement of your eardrums itself. Um, and your eardrums are a lot more sensitive to higher frequencies. For a start, they're quite small, so their um, resonant frequency is going to be very high as well. Um, also, when you when you look at it in the respects of other types of rays, other types of wave, um, you have radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays, X-rays, if any of you guys do physics. Now, the lower frequency waves, radio waves, are not harmful in the least. They, don't, they do fuck all damage. There's radio waves going everywhere. FM, AM radio waves from KISS 100 radio stations, etc. They're all over the place and they do no damage, no harm to you whatsoever. As you go up the frequency band, okay, you start getting to infrared, ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is where it starts becoming dangerous. From the sun's rays, you get uh, cancer skin, uh, tan, you, you know, um, microwaves, that's what you heat your food up. That is a really, really high frequency compared to your um, radio wave. So that then causes damage to yourself or, you know, it heats up food. It's, it's, it's that crazy, it can heat up food. Then you start getting further to x-rays and gamma rays, which do serious, serious damage. And it, gamma rays is what they use to kill uh, cancer cells. And it also creates cancer, which is kind of strange. But, um, so the higher frequency you go, the more damage it will do. It's the same case with sound. Um, so 90 decibels of a high pitch sound, like a car alarm or siren, is bloody loud and you're like, oh shit, that really hurts my ears. It's 90 decibels of a siren right there is, is fucking loud. 90 decibels of a frequency that is 100 hertz or less, you're like, what's, it just sounds like, it's a bass note, it's music. I'll try and demonstrate to you this using Audacity. Now I've got Audacity open here now. Um, the top frequency you see there is 3000 hertz and the bottom one is 80 hertz. Um, I'm going to solo the 3000. Um, now I've got my decibel meter here, it's quite a cheapy crap one, it's nothing special really. Um, at the moment it's set on 80, to read 80, plus or minus 6 um, decibels. Um, speech, I'm getting about 80 decibels, 8 to um, 78 decibels just from speech with the microphone pointing away from me. Which is about right, okay? Um, let's pop it onto 90 decibels here. I'm just going to hit play on the 3000 Hz test tone and see what sort of level we measure. So at the moment, it's about 87. Now, what you'll notice is as I move forward, it changes. That's because high frequencies are very directional. Right, so that is 90 decibels at 3000 hertz. Okay, now that was fucking, that was doing my ears and that was really annoying. That was, that was kind of starting to really, you know, like when you got a high-pitched sound, it's like, oh shit, what the bloody hell is that? It's really annoying. It's really quite loud to the ears and it feels very uncomfortable. It's not very nice. If I was to boost that up a level, um, let's go be careful here. Um, I'm going to try and get like 100 decibels. Um, I've got quite good tweeters here. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, another, another four behind the TV, so I've got enough speakers here I reckon to do this um, ah fucking hell let's go to a hundred there we go so a hundred ah fucking hell that is that is really really bad on my ears that's fucking killing my ears so a hundred hertz no sorry a hundred decibels at three thousand hertz kind of hurts <laughs> if you ignore the pun Okay, uh, now I'm going to unsolo, I'm going to bring the 80 hertz tone and I'm going to see, turn it down a little bit just in case anything goes mad. Now I'm just going to show you what 90 and 100 decibels of 80 hertz is like. So let's crank this up a little bit. Uh, bring the multimeter background, so let's put it on to 90, okay. Now already, that's not hurting my ears or anything, it's very comfortable. It's just a, a warming tone that's going on there. At the moment, that is reading at 113 decibels. So that was already much, uh, that was significantly louder than my 3000 hertz test tone at 100 decibels, that really hurt. Um, but my bass test tone here, if I bring that over here, 
is showing at about 114 um, and that's completely fine that's very comfortable nice listening level um, yeah it's just warm tone really if I bang that up even further things are starting to shake on my desk a little bit I have got really good front speakers here that is now showing at 111 decibels Sorry, that's going to annoy the people downstairs. It's, it's, it's a very loud bass note. I can feel it in my chest. Um, and things are starting to shake on the desk a little bit. Um, and But still, my ears do not hurt or do not feel affected by that bass tone. It's more my body. It's more of an experience for your body. It's less of an ear piercing sound, okay? The things that do you damage are the higher frequencies, just like in gamma rays and x-rays. And the lower frequencies, like the bass notes and like radio waves, do much much less damage and you have to crank it up a hell of a lot more to give any sort of damage. Um, the sort of listening levels you get at SPL competitions, 140 decibels plus, when you listen to them for a long sort of time you could get hearing damage. I have been in cars where my ears have physically hurt due to the bass. Um, my friend who is part of my team, Team Waffle, uh, I'll show you on my Facebook quickly. This is my team, Team Waffle. Um, this is my SPL guys who we compete with. Um, he's doing some fucking installation stuff here. Got some yellow tops in the back. Um, like the guy's car who I sat in had two 15 inch Orion HCCAs, and his peak he's ever done is 153 decibels, and that was at 31 hertz, I believe. And trust me, it really hurt my ears. It, I was not happy, I was just like, nah, turn that off, it's, it's too loud, like, it's getting crazy. I would love that in my car, because I'd be able to compete with it, but I can't sit there and listen to 151 decibels of bass, even down that low, okay? So, I hope this video has just kind of explained a little bit, um, you, everyone will have their own views, I'm not trying to say that I'm right and you're wrong, I'm, just, I'm saying um, that this makes sense, what I just explained to you here, um, in the real life terms, in competition terms, you do uh, people do put out 150 decibels of bass because people compete with it and they measure it with proper professional decibel meters. Um, with PA audio, yes, um, anything over 130 decibels would really hurt your ears because with PA, you're playing music. With SPL competitions, you're playing a single sine wave, a bass note. Music at 130 decibels is very bad for your ears. A bass note under, I don't know, 100 hertz at 130 decibels will not kill your ears. And it just kind of feels really strange in your body. Um, yeah. So I hope that that has cleared up this little discussion here. If any of you guys want to see it, it's on the TSW304 SPL Getting Loud. 145 dB plus subwoofers. That is the video that the discussion is on. Just click on the all comments and sort by thread beta and it looks a bit easier for you to see. So um, feel free to comment on it after as well with, you, with your views um, or send me a message or do whatever you like. I'll be doing some more videos of some updates and stuff soon as well. So stay tuned to the channel guys.